Hey, what's up, gang? It's Wes. It's been a little bit since we've done more of the existential, um, you know, <laughs> kind of inward looking psychological videos for artists. So let's do one of those. Do you remember why you started creating art in the first place? Do you remember, was it a specific moment? Was it like a catalyst? Was it a combination of things? Why did art choose you to partake? Everyone's going to have a different answer, and I find that very interesting. And as you can see, um, I'm getting pretty excited. The new Spider-Man movie is coming out very, very soon. Um, in fact, next weekend, I believe. And, you know, a few weeks ago was free comic book day, and I was able to take my daughter, and we were able to have a really good time. Uh, got some Spider-Man stuff. So you're probably sensing a theme here. Uh, now, I have covered this a little bit before in a previous video, but there's some new kind of info and new things that happened recently that I want to talk about that really kind of brought me back to the days of why I got into this into the first place. And I think if you really dig down deep and you figure out why, uh, you know, what called you to make art in the first place, it's gonna help ease your mind because we have a lot of stuff to think about now. We have, you know, social media stuff that we have to keep track of and like AIs knocking on the door and there's a lot of things going on and it's very, very easy to get caught up in the rut and, and kind of the, the noise that is life. So maybe it's good to refill the gas tank, to really take a step back and ask yourself, why do you paint? <laughs> And here we go. So this painting was done in Clip Studio Paint in its entirety. And I've wanted to do more with Clip Studio 2.0. And I think this was kind of a perfect way to break in the brushes. And you know, it feels very much like Clip Studio Part 1, but I wanted to do Volume 2. Um, just a little bit about what the process was behind this and um, all members of the YouTube channel. So if you do the subscription for, I think it's like five bucks a month, uh, you're going to get a full like Photoshop file, a PSD file and a full size PNG file of this exact Spider-Man piece. So that way you can actually follow along from the beginning, beginning, even before I started recording and kind of see how I put in uh, my stuff really I started off with a very rough sketch to try to just nail the anatomy and you know a hand holding a hand type of thing and Then went in with kind of an underpainting. I've been liking to do a lot of underpainting now and Really I really like kind of the the burnt sienna the really kind of really rich dark yellow brown is kind of my underpainting that way you can still see some of it as I'm layering on different levels of paint, the, exactly the same way I would with acrylics or oils. So yeah, um, what you're seeing here, I, I was probably about an hour and a half in, maybe two hours in. Uh, I think the whole piece took about four hours, four and a half hours. And I wanted to do something that was kind of like, I, I know I wanted to do Spider-Man because that's kind of what we're gonna talk about, but I wanted to do like a kind of a Caravaggio or a, uh, a whole, Rembrandt style, <laughs> that whole, you know, the, the kind of the really nice ochres and stuff like that. Uh, but then also paint Spider-Man and see if I could kind of get away with it. So I ended up being a little bit more illustrative later where you're going to see a lot of rim light type stuff. And what was really interesting to me is I was able to get decent paint strokes on here. And what really kind of tied it all together were the web lines on the costume so you know those black lines that kind of outline um, really what they do is they outline the contours of the suit so if you're a kind of an art student or you know you're a more advanced artist and you need to practice anatomy and like dynamic poses and stuff I would highly recommend doing a lot of spider-man art because one spider-man does some crazy like he can get away with doing a lot of weird poses that like normal human beings can't really do. And if he's flying through the air and he's shooting web, like you can do a lot. You can do foreshortening, you can have his foot coming at you, you know, like you can do some interesting things, but really the secret is in his outfit. 
Whenever you have, and I know he has a lot of outfits, um, whether it's, you know, Miles, or in this case, this was Peter Parker. That was my Spider-Man. Uh, but I hear, spoiler alert, I think Miles is a cooler Spider-Man. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but the web lines on the outfit actually show contour lines. They follow the form. And it's a great way to see very quickly if your anatomy is on point. Um, because the, the, you know, they both go long ways and around. So, uh, you know, arms and legs are cylinders and, you know, whenever you break down the human anatomy in that sort of way, um, it simplifies it, but with the Spider-Man outfit, it accentuates it. It brings it back. So even if you start doing some curvy muscles and like you do like these, like ripples for his abs and obliques and all this stuff you can still have those lines of the contour reinforce the planes of what you're working on. So just a quick tip, if you're if you're kind of stuck on anatomy or if you want to try something a little more dynamic, try Spider-Man. Um, it could be Gwen Stacy, it could be any, any spider person. Um, I know Spider-Boy just got announced and so pick your favorite and, and do some fun studies. Just have some fun, you know, kick back, relax. Um, so that kind of, you know, talks about this, um, and at the very end, I do some level adjustments, some tone adjustments, and then, yeah, we got a finished painting. So, like I said, it took about four and a half hours, but let's get into the meat of this episode, the real Mamma Jamma. Um, so, a few different things have been rattling around in my head. I'm really interested now, or lately, I should say, in this dynamic between learning and training and, like, practicing and stuff. And then actually painting. Now, I'm, I'm starting to realize there's a difference. And it might sound obvious, but really what I think of is like a musician. Musicians can learn scales, you can learn the modes, you can learn music theory, you can learn, you know, your inversions and all these different technical aspects. But at a certain point, you have to play music. Does that make sense? Like, you have to do the thing. You have to put it all together. You have to not be so critical, and you just have to make something. And that's what I'm starting to find more in painting and what I'm enjoying more. I'm not liking studying as much. I mean, to be fair, I've probably studied every single day God, for the past three and a half years. Um, and that's not an exaggeration. Every single day I do something. I do a sketch, I do a weird little painting, I do some sort of form study, I do something. Even if I don't show it, even if I don't publish it, I do something. I feel weird if I don't do some sort of artwork every single day. And I, I found that I'm enjoying painting and drawing more and getting kind of away from the, the, the just rigor of, you know, training. But the reason why I bring that up, I promise this is all gonna come together. And it's all going to be about Spider-Man. You'll see. <laughs> um, I had the opportunity to go visit my wife. She's a public school teacher. And, you know, this was the last week of classes. And I got to take my son. You know, he just turned two. So we went and visited mom at school. And it was a lot of fun. The kids were great. You know, he got to play catch and blow, blow bubbles and, like, all sorts of fun stuff, right? So we get to go. We get to have fun. But some of the students, um, so, hey, if you're in Mrs. Gardner's class big ups to you. Wes says hi. Um, a lot of the students came up to me and they're like, dude, I watched you. you're on YouTube, you know, <laughs> which is funny. I'm like, yeah, I mean, anyone can be on YouTube. I don't tell them this, but I'm like, anyone can be on YouTube. You're, you make the video and you're good to go. But, you know, they're like, oh man, you're on YouTube. And then a lot of students would ask me this one question. And I don't know why, but this one question like crystallized everything into my mind. And I couldn't, I still can't stop thinking about it. What all can you draw? And I thought about it for a minute. And I was like, well, what do you mean? And like, well, what do you, can you like, can you draw a bear? Yeah. Can you, could you draw a dragon? Yeah. Could you draw? And then I remembered, I'm like, oh yeah. I used to think that way too. Way back when, I'm almost 40. So this was like a lifetime ago. But like... I used to think that way. Oh, the, the, these artists for comic books or painters or all this other stuff, they can, 
well, that's insane. They can draw anything. They can paint anything. What is what? They could paint a car. They could paint a building. Like, it's very object oriented. It's very focused on the thing. And it, it kind of hit me out of left field because I was like, well, I, I haven't thought about that. Like, items. Drawing an apple. Draw, like, I've never, uh, or uh, I have before, but not lately. Not in the past, you know, three years. Like, doing this professionally and studying and doing color theory and light bouncing and what's the difference between a reflection and a refraction. And when it, you know, you get into this nitty gritty stuff whenever you're working at a professional level. And at the end of the day, you just forget. Like, oh, that's cool. You can draw a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or whatever. And I was like, oh, yeah. This is what it's about. Like, it's awesome. It's like, yeah, you, you learn the fundamentals and you learn these things. And then you can make whatever you want. And I don't know. There's something about that one quit. What all can you draw? Like, I'm still, I'm not stumped by it. But I'm like, whoa, that takes me back. And what it reminds me of, you know, my my daughter and I are going to go see the new Spider-Man movie, uh, Across the Spider-Verse. And, you know, I've always loved Spider-Man. I've loved Spider-Man since I was really young, right? I'd get Wizard Magazine. I'd get, uh, you know, I talked about this in one of the Ask Wes episodes. But, you know, I'd get Wizard Magazine and I have some amazing, um, well, literally I have some copies of The Amazing Spider-Man. But, like, old school, like 1996, 1994 era Spider-Man comics like Venom and Maximum Carnage and all that stuff, right? And I would just sit in the living room with notebook paper and a mechanical pencil and I would trace and then I would try to draw it and then I would trace and then I would try to draw it and then I'd be like, look, I know how to draw Spider-Man, right? Like, I, I solved it. I, <laughs> I've, I've done it. And, you know, I'm eight or nine, at the, probably younger than that even. Well, 94, I'd, I'd be eight, yeah. So, right around there, you know, and show it to mom and dad, and look at that, and then the friends at school, and you undo the notebook paper, and like, look at this, check this out. And they're like, what? What? And you knew you were really good if people thought you traced and you didn't. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, now you're, now you're cooking. <laughs> but it, it really did. It brought me back and I was like, oh man. And the first art book I ever bought or ever really got was How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way, you know, by Stan Lee and uh, John Bosima. I think that's how you say his name. I probably butchered it. Sorry. Um, terrible with names, by the way, and pronunciations. I'm a, I'm a dumb hick from the Midwest, so what are you going to do? Uh... <laughs> But it's, um, uh, yeah, you study that book. And you, I look at that book now. I still have it on my bookshelf. And you open it, and then you realize how much great knowledge is in that book. So whenever you're younger, you see it, and there's, like, box stick figures and, you know, composition and turn, you know, Dutch angle and, like, all these terms. And you kind of get it, but you're like, oh, that's neat, that's neat. But it seems kind of boring. It's kind of academic, right? But then you come back to it after you know some of this stuff. And you realize this book, you could get this book for 10 bucks. And this is eight years of art school all in one, you know, if you really dedicate the time and learn it, you know, you can draw anything. So in a weird way, you know, having free comic book day recently, taking my daughter to that. She loves Miles Morales. She like has a crush on Miles. You know what I mean? Um, the, yeah, movie coming out. I've been playing the uh, Spider-Man game, the remastered Spider-Man on PC. I have it on PS4 as well, and I have Miles Morales on PS5, but I just don't have a lot of time to play games. I would love to, but I just don't have the time. Um, all, all signs are pointing to Spider-Man. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, you should do something about this. You should, you should paint, you should get something out of your system. Something's happening. You should do this thing. And like, yeah, would it be a dream come true to paint a cover for Marvel? You bet. Are you kidding me? Like a variant, anything. Like, that'd be incredible. 
I don't have what it takes to do the sequential art. Like I'm not that good. Um, those those artists are insane. By the way, like comic book artists, uh, so people do not give it enough credit. They don't. You have to simplify forms. You have to simplify shapes. You have to make good compositions, silhouettes, everything for every panel sequentially you you are the director the producer the the actor the actress the the environment specialist the the prop maker like you are all of it you know what i mean and you know and then you have the fine touch of the inkers and the colors to try to find exactly the right contract there's so much work that goes into a comic book all i want to do is a cover the covers are easy <laughs> comparatively like oh my gosh I'll just make a painting. There you go. There it is. Um, try to move some books. You know, that, that's what it's about. But, but yeah, like, I would love it. Like, eight-year-old me would lose his mind. So I was like, okay, if I were to do a classical, quote-unquote, classical study of Spider-Man, what would it be? And it'd be something like this. It'd be a, kind of that, like I said, the, the Rembrandt Caravaggio impasto paint type stuff. Um, I dig it. It's not very comic booky but hopefully it still looks pretty rad. Um, it has a good mood to it, you know. But I'm, I'm, I'm curious, what, what is the thing, what is the catalyst that brought you into art? I would have to say mine is probably comics, even though I'm not a comic artist. Um, just comic books and the whole storytelling and like the drama of it. And it's amazing. And it's, it's timeless. It truly is timeless. You can look back at the golden era stuff. You can look at the contemporary stuff now. Like I read a lot of the books from Free Comic Book Day this year, and I was like, "Damn, dude, I'm missing out. I don't buy enough comics. I need to, <laughs> I need to get more stuff." I got all the Spider-Man ones, like the Spider-Man, the prequel to the new game coming out. I got that one. I got the Spider-Man and Venom. Uh, I got that one. So they even had some old back ones of like 2021, 2022. I was able to pick up those. Um, I know this isn't part of the you know the theme but like i'm super into the new conan the barbarian from titan comics holy crap oh delatora doing work on that artwork man incredible um anyway but yeah comics are rad basically is the moral of the story but that's what got me into it i loved the look of the drawings and i wanted to learn how to do that and ironically I still don't know how to do that. <laughs> Not that exact thing. But the whole inspirational, you know, you you dedicate yourself and you learn a craft. Whatever gets you in the door is the thing, you know. That there's always that saying like always dance with the person that brought you to the dance. And that's that's what it is. So I felt like I needed to give my boy Spider-Man all incarnations. Um, some props and it was just so funny to you know the, the the students really didn't care that I worked on Star Wars or Warhammer or you know Riot Games or Universe like all these big big clients they didn't really they were like oh that's neat but can you draw like a tennis racket <laughs> you know and it did it took me back and I was like man that's funny like that's so cool um but yeah let me know what got you into art and even whatever your art is doesn't even have to be painting i know the episode's called why do you paint but like if you're a musician if you're a writer or a poet was there an aha moment was there a one specific thing like for me it was comics in general like i like the idea of comics it wasn't one issue of one comic um but like just the overall like whoa spawn looks awesome cable looks awesome gambit looks awesome oh my god like just really digging in you know fantastic four and you you know you see batman and you know the joker oh my god you know like all this stuff just really resonated um if you're a musician was it like a certain concert you went to was it just a song on the radio was there a moment you always hear about moments from like professional wrestlers and they talk about, you know, they were seven years old and they saw Stone Cold Steve Austin and they're like, holy crap, who's that guy? You know, and that started their journey into becoming part of the craft. 
So what was it? What was your catalyst? I'd love to hear all sorts of comments. Um, I'm going to read every single one of them. But yeah, I think that's such an interesting deal. And, you know, with such the headache that is life, contemporary life of social media is going a billion miles an hour. Uh, you know, the, the algorithms change all the time. You can't really get noticed, but sometimes you do, but sometimes you don't. And then, you know, how fast is everything moving? And Facebook's crazy. And, you know, now AI is coming for everybody's job. And you're like, what is, you know, can I have a moment to myself? You need that peace of mind. Go back, go backwards and think about what brought you here in the first place. You know, even if you're on your first steps of learning, what brought you in recently? Was there a certain piece of art? Was there a certain movie? What, what was it that brought you to the dance? And that's a super interesting question, but I cannot wait to read your comments about this. Uh, yeah, it's been a little bit since we've done one of these kind of navel gazing, like, hmm, I wonder type of videos, but hopefully you dug it and we'll get back to the more kind of, uh, you know, traditional, I guess, like tutorial-esque videos very, very soon. Um, I do say that, but my wife is extremely pregnant. She's 36 weeks. Baby could be here literally any moment. <laughs> So we'll see how this goes. So this might be the last one before we have baby. I don't know. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comments what got you here. Why are you here? Why do you push yourself? Why do you learn? And can't wait to read them. So until next time, go out there, make cool art. And we'll talk to you soon. Peace.